So if you want to master your music for Spotify, all you have to do is master it to minus 14 loves dB. And if you want to go higher than minus 14 loves dB, then make sure that the true peak of your song is less than minus 2 dB. Now, if you know what that means, you can just skip this video. But if you want to know what it means, keep watching and I'll show you. But first, I need to do my intro. Hey everyone, Andrew Southworth, GenerousStudios.com, here to teach you how to make better music and help you achieve your musical goals. So as I mentioned in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to master a mix or master a song that is optimized for streaming on Spotify, but this also applies for services like YouTube or any other services that use a love standard Apple Music and, and all of them really do nowadays. So if you're new here, my channel is all about helping you, the music creator, so feel free to leave any comments and I'll try to help out as much as I can. My channel is all about just trying to provide my experience and everything that I know to help you as much as I can. So feel free to subscribe if that sounds interesting to you. I upload videos every single Tuesday and Friday. Without further ado, let's dive into the video. Here we go. All right, and we're in. So if you want to master music for Spotify, the best place to start is with the information that Spotify provides openly. And you can look for this information uh, in the description. I'll provide the link, but you can also just go on Google and type in the Spotify Mastering Standard or Spotify Luffs, and it'll bring you to this uh, FAQ that they have. And if you scroll down, you'll see this, will Spotify play my track at the level it's mastered? And here they describe exactly what they want. So as I said in the intro, this, this is basically just what I said. Well, you, they want to target the loudness of your master to minus 14 dB Luffs, keep below minus 1 dB true peak. And if your master's louder than that, make sure it stays below minus 2 dB true peak to avoid extra distortion. And the reason for this distortion, I'm not going to go into the, the way that uh, digital information is stored, um, but basically it, ha it has to do with that. If your track's loud, then all the values are closer to max, so then when they transcode it to a lossy format that they use for streaming, it's more likely to add extra artifacts in the master. Now, if you scroll down, you don't have to read all of this, but I'll summarize it for you. This just describes the standard that they use, replay gain. Feel free to look that up if you want. In the future, they're switching to a different standard. And then what is loudness normalization? Why is it used? And to summarize this, in the past, they, there used to be this thing called the loudness wars. It still kind of exists, but pretty much uh, people would try to master their song to the loudest possible sound so that it would stand out from the crowd. Basically, if you had the loudest track on the radio, or even in commercials as applied, you notice a lot of commercials are very loud. It's because they want to stand out from the crowd. They, they want people to look and pay attention. And the, the reason why Spotify is so interested in this Luffs thing is because it provides them a very easy way to make sure that all the music on the platform is roughly the same volume. And this is important because you don't want to be playing a playlist or something and all of a sudden, you know, one track super quiet, so you turn down your speakers, next track is super loud and it just like hurts you. Uh, or, you know, you'd be very dissatisfied. You'd feel like it wasn't a good experience. So that's why Luffs exists. And I have a track here that I'm going to use as an example just to kind of show you how you can master to this standard. It is, it's very simple. It comes down to just the tools you have, but there are free tools to do it. I'm going to show you the tools I use. So. Uh, just for, so you know in advance, this is a metal track, but it applies to any genre of music. So, so I have Ozone 8 open, and here we're only going to be focusing on the maximizer. There are things you can do in the dynamics to affect the final volume of your song and the lust value, but that is something more that you're just going to adjust to make your song sound good, and then typically you're just going to use the maximizer to get the final volume and final amount of squash that you want. So if I hit play, you'll hear the song and you'll see where the meters stand. And you'll see that the, the volume comes down here. Now if I pull this down as it plays, you'll see that we're starting to get some limiting and you'll see that the actual volume of the track will get louder. Pay attention to the uh, meters over here. Now important thing, I'm gonna enable true peak. Um, depending on what you're using, you may or may not have that, but it's very important that you do if you want to make sure that you're paying attention to whatever your actual true peak values, because from the website, Spotify directly says that that's an important value. So I'll play. So pulling down the threshold makes the song louder, you know, whoopie doo. But it also changes the Luffs value. And the great thing about Ozone in particular is that it has this built in target system that you can use to just directly affect your lust value. Now, the way that this works is you're going to go to the beginning of your song, you're going to hit learn, and then you're going to click play, and everything's going to start bouncing around. I'm not going to demonstrate that because you'd have to listen to the entire song and watch the meters bounce, but I'll, I'll do it just for the beginning of the song so you can see what happens.
and you want to let this go for the entire song because the the luff system is or specifically integrated luffs it relies on the entire track it's not looking at a specific maximum volume in your song it's looking at the entire song so if you have quiet parts and very loud parts it's going to try to normalize everything so that the average value of the song hits a certain integrated luffs value and you can set this and it'll it'll set it for you and it'll be minus minus 14 luffs and perfect and you could just say okay i'm done that's great but it's not really what you want to do you the way the reason for the luff system is so that you can master your song to whatever you think sounds the best and then put it on spotify and they'll fix the volume for you now that this is a good thing this is not a bad thing a lot of people seem to think it's bad because it it makes them unable to make their song compete against other songs it provides an equal playing field which i would argue is the one of the best parts of it you just just make your song sound good if you want it to sound over compressed and limited you can do that it'll it'll all work out if you want it to sound very dynamic you can still do that it'll all work out so i'm just going to pull this meter to what i would and since i know that i'm going to be going above minus 14 lufts db i'm going to pull my ceiling down to minus 2.1 the reason why I'm doing minus 2.1, just to give myself a 0.1 of headroom, uh, just in case there's an error in the true peak value, which you never know. So it's just kind of a safe bet. So I'll adjust this to taste. Go to a different part of the song and take a listen. And that's roughly what I would use in reality. I would be listening to this whole song multiple times and tweaking things and going back to other elements of my master, like the dynamics, to get everything right. But that's, you know, that's roughly what the value would be. And of course, there is all these other parameters, but that's not really anything that affects mastering for Spotify. So at this point, I have a master that I think sounds good. The ceiling is at a value that Spotify will be able to handle. And we we have some lust value. We don't know what it is. Now... There's one way to do this. You could go into your audio units, and I have a meter that I could use, which is the Waves LM Plus. I don't know what the LM stands for. Um, Waves Loudness Meter. Okay, cool. And this works the same way as this tool. What you do is you play your whole song, and it'll start recording what the long term, and then by the time your song's over, the, the lust value for your whole song. So I'll show you just a couple seconds of what that does. And then that's the, you know that's roughly what it would be for the song somewhere between minus 10 minus 12 db luffs i would guess um but you know this is just averaging the entire song so by the time it was done it'd probably be around that you also get your loudness range now this this is a great way to do it and uh it has its own advantages and disadvantages um, one that it's built in your daw so you just play your song and you can get your actual song lust value what i like to do is i like to export the song and then upload it to a certain site. And I'll show you what that site is. If I go back to my web browser, it's called Loudness Penalty. And I use this tool for every single song since it's been a thing. I don't actually know how long it's been out. Um, but for my last several songs, I've been using this. And all you do is you drag and drop your song and you see what the lust value is. Bouncing, 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 dithering, 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 dithering. Okay. So this website is called Loudness Penalty, and it does exactly what the loudness meter does, except that it also gives you values so that you can see and listen to your song as you were listening to on these streaming services, which is a pretty convenient, powerful tool. The only downside is that you have to export out of your DAW, and they do say that they have a plugin now, which I've never checked out. Uh, I'll check it out after this video. Um, so I, I exported my song here, so I'm going to drag it in. And they say that your file will not be uh, uploaded or stored, so they have some way of, I guess, making sure that songs don't get leaked early, which is good if you're concerned about that. I'm personally not very concerned. Um, so here we go. You get your results. So this says that on Spotify, my track's going to be turned down by minus 3.5 dB, which means that my LUF standard was at 10.5 or minus 10.5 dB uh, integrated LUFs. And then on YouTube, they have different standards. And you can actually just click this and you can listen. Listen to it on Tidal. Whoa. Listen to it on Tidal. Decay, 
and you can just hear what the volumes will sound like. And if you were to get into a situation where your track isn't loud enough, uh, y you can see if that's the case, which is very important. Now, I want to point out the case where your track isn't loud enough, and I'll drag this no master version on there, and it'll process it. I'm guessing it's not going to be loud enough because this, this is just a mixed track with no master, and it has headroom on it so that I could tweak it in the master. So as you can see here, for Spotify, it's actually going to turn it up by 3.7 dB, Pandora by 4, and iTunes by 1. Now, Tidal and YouTube, apparently, they don't increase playback levels. They only decrease. Same for Tidal. Now, this is a bad situation because this means your track is going to be quieter than everything else on those services. And this Spotify value, it's also not really a good thing because it means that they're going to apply limiting to your track to get it down to the value. And as you know from adjusting the limiter, the limiting can actually change how your song sounds. If your track is too loud, it just gets turned down. If your track is too quiet, they limit it to the value that it needs to be at. And that's a bad thing. So I would recommend for most people. So because of these issues with having your track limited up to volume, you really want to make sure that you don't fall below that minus 14 loves dB. So if you can get your master to sound great at exactly minus 14 loves dB and you know with your meters that it's going to be there, that's great. But I would recommend going a little bit above. You'd rather have them turn down your track then limit your track up to volume. With that said, the beauty of Luffs really is that you can just master your song to whatever you think it should sound like and then not worry about trying to squash it just so it stands out from the crowd on whatever website you want people to listen to your music on. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button and let me know in the comments if any of this stuff is confusing to you and I'll be happy to help or point you to a resource that you can read to further your knowledge on the subject. I left your video right here on how to master your own music that I think you'll really find helpful if you like this video. So I'll see you there. Bye.